Hi there. I hope you had a lovely Easter holiday and really enjoyed that wonderful sunshine we had there. Let's begin our collective worship by welcoming each other back to school with peace. Peace be with you. And now, whilst you get yourself comfortable, I'm going to light our virtual candle. So if you're ready for a story, the story I'm going to share with you today is a story from the Bible about something that happened that first Easter. But it's a story about not believing. I wonder, what does it take you to believe in something? Because believing's not about knowing everything. But we do have to know enough in order to be able to believe. So let's think for a moment. I wonder if any of you have been learning to play an instrument and maybe your teacher has told you that you're good enough to take your first exam. And so you practice and you practice and you practice and you take the exam but at the end of it, you're not really sure whether you've passed or not. And your teacher might tell you you've passed the exam, but perhaps you're so surprised that you don't really believe it until you see the certificate and hold it in your own hands. You have to see the evidence with your own eyes before you can believe you've passed your exam. Or maybe your family have told you that you are going to go to Legoland. You're so excited and you're really, really looking forward to it and you can't wait. And people have told you it's going to be fantastic, but you really can't quite believe it until you're there and you're walking through the gates and you can sit on the rides at Legoland and look at all the Lego around you. You have to be there yourself before you can believe it. Or perhaps uh, you're really sporty and you've entered a race and at the finish line, it's really close with some of the other runners and you think you've won, but you can't quite believe it. Perhaps you need to hold the prize for yourself, to touch it, feel the metal and the ribbons with your own hands. Sometimes it's really hard to believe something and sometimes it's especially hard to believe something when you've been a bit disappointed first. Maybe in the past you've been in a race and you thought you'd won but then you were told you'd come second and you were beaten just on the line and all your hopes and excitement just went away and you were disappointed. Thomas was a bit like that. He was sad and disappointed. He had hoped Jesus would be the new king who would save everyone. And on Palm Sunday, just before Easter, it had been so exciting when the crowds had cheered Jesus and waved the palm branches. But then Jesus had died on the cross and Thomas was so disappointed. Then on Easter Sunday, Jesus's friends heard from the women who'd visited the tomb that morning. They'd said that Jesus was alive. Jesus's friends were confused and afraid and they gathered together in a room. And then suddenly Jesus was with them in the room. He talked to his friends and he said, peace be with you and gave them God's Holy Spirit to give them strength. But Thomas wasn't in the room. We don't know where he was. Maybe he'd gone to the shops to get some bread. Maybe he'd gone to the loo. We don't know. But wherever he'd gone, he'd missed all the excitement. And when he got back, 
Jesus's friends told him the news that they'd see Jesus alive with them in the room. But Thomas couldn't believe it. He said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were, I will not believe it. I wonder what Thomas was feeling at that time. I wonder what questions he had. But then, a week later, Jesus' friends were together again, and suddenly Jesus was with them in the room. Peace be with you, Jesus said. And this time, Thomas was there. Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, stop doubting and believe. Thomas was there in person. He could see the evidence with his own eyes and touch Jesus with his own hands. My Lord and my God, said Thomas. He could believe now. Jesus told his friends, you've believed because you've seen me. But how happy will the people be who have not seen and are able to believe? Thomas needed evidence to believe that Jesus was alive with new life. He wanted to see for himself. He'd had lots of questions, I'm sure, and wanted to check things out. But then Thomas believed. And tradition tells us that Thomas went on to travel the world and tell people about Jesus. You can see he traveled from the Middle East, just above Africa, down all the way to India, along that red line I've put on the map. And there, wherever he went, he told people about his experiences and helped other people to believe. Thomas served Jesus well. And stories outside of the Bible say that by 20 years after Jesus' death and resurrection, Thomas had made his way all the way to India, right to the south of India, and he formed a church there which still remembers that Thomas came to share his belief with them. And he died in Chennai, where that red circle is on the map, in about 72 AD. And in Chennai, there is still a hill called St. Thomas's Mount, with a church on it dedicated to St. Thomas. And so we can remember that Thomas used his intelligence to ask questions and think things through. Thomas was also very honest and shared his doubts. He didn't pretend or go along with what others said. But when he had enough evidence, he was courageous enough to change his mind. And he believed and shared his beliefs with others too. And he went on to serve the church and to serve the people of India. He told them about the evidence that he'd seen and touched. He told them that he was there. God's given us brains to think and to ask questions and to find out what we believe. We can think about the evidence and think about what we feel inside. And if you have questions, you can ask others what they think and believe. Maybe someone at one of the churches in Richmond. I'm going to finish our collective worship with a short prayer. As always, you can make it your prayer by saying Amen at the end. Or if you'd like to, you could turn off the sound on the video and say your own words instead. But if you don't believe in prayer and you've got lots of questions about prayer, then that's okay. You can just sit quietly and use the words 
to reflect. So let's have a moment of quiet together. Thank you, God, that we have the power to think, to discover and explore belief. Thank you for Thomas, who shared his beliefs and told people about Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening. Peace be with you. Goodbye.